Episode of We Are Seven by Seven, the show. We got my former teammates, Hallwood, Mike Holliman. You know it. You probably got dunked on, dunked oh, on them in 06. You did get dunked on, guaranteed. <laughs> if we played against you, you got dunked on. How you doing, brother? Chilling, man. I'm tired, man. You know, trying to hydrate you, before the night. How you feel about this Kobe situation, man? That shit hurt. Man, it don't hurt, man. It was tough, yo. Like, when I, when we had got back from mass and nothing, yo, I was on the couch, and I'm scrolling through the gram. I'm like, I see the joint. I'm like, nah, hell nah, bro. So I text Juice. <laughs> like, yo, you see this? He's like, bro, I can't believe this, bro. I ain't, until ESPN drop, I ain't gonna believe it. So I fell asleep. Mm-hmm. And I woke up. That shit is everywhere. I said, no, man. I called Juice. He answered the phone. I said, mm-hmm. yo. And I'm just sitting there literally for the whole night just scrolling, like, and then I found out that his daughter was in that joint yeah, too. That's, that's what it hurt, man. I was like, the most, yeah, to me anyway. Yeah, and the thing what I was thinking is like, you know, uh, the father's supposed to be a protector, bro. Like, mm-hmm. at that moment, what did he say to his daughter when that? I don't you know, even want to think of You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you say to her? Like, do you take take the straps off and go hug her? Like, mm-hmm. what do you say? Like, when you in that moment, you know it's about to be over. Like, I was like, dad, I can't feel it. Like, until to this day, bro, like, I'm still be thinking about that shit. Like, I could only imagine. That shit bro. fucked me up. I stopped working overtime at work. Yeah, just come like, home. Yeah, 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 just to be with my son all the time. Yeah, right? yeah, like, bro. I was like, man. Because it's, it's crazy. And I'm not even the, like, the craziest Kobe fan. I'm an AI fan, but just that experience was just like. Yeah. Like, that shit came out of nowhere. And then like, people go at really any time, bro. But people think that people like that are supposed to die, though. Mm hmm. So when it happens. Not like that, anyway. Right, not like that. But when it happens, <laughs> you think it's going to be like, he going to be. You know, on his death bread because he's sick or something like that. He gonna go all that way, but like helicopter joint. That's like, dang. But you know, it's kind of like if you look at it, bro. Like he did everything he wanted to do for real. Though. You know what I'm saying? Like he was still doing a lot more, dealing with his kids and his time and stuff like that. But like, look what he did when he was in the league. Like his purpose li- literally was to play basketball, bro. Like that's just, it's crazy that just as soon as he finished, two years later he gone. He dead and gone. Like that's it. Like soon as he finished basketball for twenty years. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. It's, it's kind of like he lived. He lived what he was supposed to do, Man. cause it's everywhere right now. You got <laughs> I seen the soccer dude Neymar with a jersey uh-huh. on out there practicing. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's everywhere. The high school kids getting the tattoos and stuff. Like I was watching the uh, overtime. Look at the overtime. They showing all the kids. Yeah. The dude Mikey. Um, mm-hmm. He got the, the um, Mikey Williams. Mikey Williams mm-hmm. got the Kobe John. The other two young boys got the Kobe John. Yeah. 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 So I was like, damn. Like it's 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 an impact for. Us throughout the world, so it's like, it's dope seeing it, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, but it's all that that is, that had to happen, but it's dope like, seeing everybody get on the page of, you know, living life to the fullest, or yeah. like you said, it made you want to stop working overtime because you was a kid, you know what I'm saying, like, it's crazy how it make everything in somebody's life shift it, uh, from a person that you don't even know, you know what I'm saying, like, so. I had to put my phone down for two days, yeah. I kind of I be hate hey, looking, like, even now, you're like, I be seeing pictures of Gigi and all that, I'm like, man, Stroll past and shit, I can't do it no more. Oh yeah, that's crazy. So what? So on a better note, rest in peace Kobe. And rest in peace Kobe. And Gigi and everybody else that passed away in that accident. But how, how uh, what made you start hooping? Like, who put the ball in your hands? Man, for real. You know, growing up, like, nobody put the basketball in my hand. My dad put the football in my hand growing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, my dad was a beast at football. So um, he played at him and his brother played at Kelvin okay. High School. So it was so it started off with basketball with me, and then I was playing baseball for a minute. And then you know basketball was always like used to do outside, you know what I'm saying, like with the homeboys and on the outside court. But I never like wanted to play mm-hmm. play like it was always football and baseball. But for real, like I was just trying to do everything. So like you know, of course, I did the rec leagues. So, like, me and Aaron used to play on the rec league teams. But I really wasn't passionate about basketball. Like it was always football and baseball. Mm-hmm. But shit, then when you know started like looking around, everybody was around me. Baseball was the cool shit to do no more. <laughs> so you know, it's like football, everybody was getting huge, and I won't get no bigger. So it was like 
right, let me get serious about basketball. And that was probably like, let's say about middle school, about ninth, like about, yeah, about seventh, eighth grade. What school did you go to? I went to uh, Land Lan Lan Middle. Okay. And we I went to Plaza for like three days and did with Land Lan Middle. Like, I went to every school in the world. But, <laughs> but yeah, I went to Land Lan Middle and then got to Land Lan Middle and I played. Football for a year, then I signed with them, quit that shit, because like I said, everybody was getting bigger than me. Mm -hmm. Then I played baseball. I loved baseball, but then I hated going, like, I used to joke because I used to walk around, like, in the beginning of the, uh, the school, you had the, the baseball bag. Like, man, put that baseball <laughs> bag up, man. Like, so it was like, one of the cool things to do, so I stopped playing baseball, literally just because, it was like, yo, let everybody play baseball, bro. But I wish I would've kept doing it, but, so I kept trying with the basketball team. Got cut every year. Every year, bro, I was hard working. I was like, you know, I'm gonna stop playing. Like, I'm gonna go back to baseball. Because it was literally like everybody that was making a team, though, I was playing basketball with already. Like, that rec uh -huh. league, while I was trying to do the AAU back then, like, I still got cut from every AAU team, too. Like, so it was like everybody knew that Mike and Hoop, but he could never make those squads. So every time, <laughs> every time I, I used to call that day, used to call, but, like, a trial or the cut, like, yo, Mike, come to trial, bro, come to trial. I'm like, man, I'm not going to trial. And, like, I ain't want to cut me again, but I kept going, kept going. I didn't know that. Yeah, but I, I didn't make that no squad, bro. Like, <laughs> Percy and all of them used to make the scene every uh -huh. year, bro. Like, none of that. Because me and Percy grew up since we was like five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we played on the same, like, rec league teams all the time. Then we got to, like I said, middle school. You know, he was on the middle school basketball team, middle school football team. You're like, yo, bro, you got to try. Like, me and him used to. My mom used to drop me off at his at his crib every morning, and me and him used to catch the bus together. We used to call like we were so close, but we used to call each other like, "Yo, bro, what jersey you wearing today?" Like, "Oh, I'm about to wear the other one. Then I'm gonna wear the same one." So we used to do everything together. So then we used to, they got in like basketball trials and jumps. We used to go to the trials together. You know, I get to the last trial, get cut. He like, "Yo, bro, I'm not even gonna play no more, yo." I was like, "Man, you better go ahead and play for me." I was like, "I was gonna hold this basketball. Y'all wanna go play baseball?" Never did that. Then um. My freshman year, my, what about my eighth grade year going to my freshman year, mm -hmm. that last time we was, um, I had tried out for AAU, uh, Boo Will was being selecting, but LK was a, a coach, LK dad was a coach. Okay. Um, and got cut again. I was mad because I thought I was good this time, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Like, because I've been playing with him, I've been like all, all summer, all winter, you know what I'm saying? I've been playing with him, so I thought I was good. Got cut again, so it was like August. And I was at the crib, and um, I came home for my birthday, and my mom and my dad had water guns waiting on me in the crib. So as I was out walking the house, my mom and my dad started squirting water guns at me, so I tried to turn around and take off out the door. Tore my meniscus. <laughs> Tore my meniscus, bro. Like, and I had to get, like, the, um, the laser microscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. And so all it was was that they just had to kind of, like, not rebuild the meniscus, but just the part that was damaged, just take it. Cause you don't have to have a meniscus. So, okay. so like, it was like the part that was damaged, they just took it out. So then after that, you know, I, of course, didn't play for a while. And then my sophomore year, well, as a matter of fact, that summer, I tried out for, again. no, I tried out for AAU again. Oh. Going into my sophomore year, made it this time. Then it was me, that was me, Kelly, LK, um, LeBron that played for uh, Ocean Lakes, Rashad. Okay. Percy played with us a couple years, a couple times. Uh, Theo Baker from Landstown. Um, who else we had? Uh, my boy Jay Dill from Kellum. We had, it was nice. You know what I'm saying? We was decent. Um, Charlie Matt that played for uh, Landstown too. Horace. Horace. We had, it was nice. So then, um, you know, we was busting ads, but like we went to, um, we was in Indiana and we played against Greg Oden and Mike Conley's squad, uh, squad. But Greg Oden, he was there, but he didn't play with Mike Conley played. And this is the year Kelly started killing. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is yeah. when he first started killing. Kelly? Kelly. Um, yeah, he was. So this is when I first met Kelly. He started killing then. And then I had um, made the JV squad that year um, for Lansdowne. The crazy thing is, as I made the squad, bro, I'm over there looking at my name on the jump. Like, oh, yeah, my name. Of course, Kelly was like, I can't practice the next day because I was like, yo, house man. You know, you call everybody house man. House man, what you doing in here, man? I said, what you mean? He was like, what you doing in here? I said, I'm on the list. He's like, nah, house man, nah. He's like, if you ready to ride the bitch, you can play with my team. I was like, all right, I said, no more. I'm like, I'm good. I ride the bitch. Bro, the bitch for like the first three, four games, bro. Like, then they probably finally put me in. I never forget who was at um, Lansdowne at a home game. 
and I got a fast break and dumped it. The coach kept like, what the fuck, you start doing that? And I was like, literally, like, after my sophomore year, bro, like, after my freshman year, when I had that meniscus tear, mm -hmm. I, it was just a growth spurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I was always short, skinny, like, so when, after my sophomore year, I shot up a little bit. So then I started starting at Lansdowne, man, it was, then after that, you know what I'm saying? It was like, this was on JV squad. Yeah, so, and I was dunking. So that was your first dunk in a in game dunk? In a game, first dunk. Well, I used to dunk in, like, practice and stuff, like, warm up, so, you know, just trying to see if I could do it, but, like, in game, yeah, I got to steal. Dunk, you know, I shot that lot myself, it was one of them. <laughs> Roll in jumps, but I don't it. So I was like, you know what? The heck? I started getting confidence from then on. Like, nah, mm -hmm. like I'm nice and just as nice as all these things. How did our season go there? Yeah. I mean, we were undefeated. For real? Yeah, cause it was nice. It was me, Horse, Percy. Um, uh, Damn, Percy plays JV. Mm-hmm. Uh, I forget. Last time I had so many killers. Killers. <laughs> Quan played with us. Um, we got X. Was X? X was playing with us. Yep. Uh, who else we had? Um, we had a lot of it was, it was, and then most of them like you know what I'm saying. Now later that season they moved up to varsity, mm -hmm. and I moved up. They moved me up to varsity, but I would never dress up. I was doing the camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the camera, man. I was like, dang. So we, I know we went to. Um, that's when last time I was playing uh, Marquee Cook at Nasman, mm -hmm. and I was doing the camera and watching Marquee Cook get busy, and um. After that, I was like, man, man, it was like, man, I ain't planning coming back to this joint no more, man. Like, so that's what made you stop? I mean, kind of, because it was like everybody that played JV, you know what I'm saying, was 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 at least suiting up, you know what I'm saying? Like, we will not suiting up, and then in practice, Rob was playing us, like, but he didn't even let us practice. Like, I saw more year, but like, it got so bad, like, we'd be in practice, and Rob wouldn't even put us in for drills and jump, like, not five on five, like <laughs> drills, bro. I used to be like, oh, nah. Like, literally, the whole practice we sitting there. So, then the second half of the season, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's when he started letting people play a little bit more. And me and Horse were eligible. Okay. So, um, then uh, Twan came to me. He was like, yo, I'm about to dip me and Randy about to go to Booker T. I was like, word. I was like, I'm about to dip too. So, then I went to my mom. My mom was like, she was already mad because I was ineligible. She was like, you know, she was, I was getting in, you know, hanging out with people that I wasn't supposed to be hanging out with, so she was getting mad. So then, um, we looked into Calvary, because we went to the church. Yeah. And that's when I went to Calvary, man. That jump was, it was, it was, that was different, bro. Like, <laughs> prep school, right? I mean, I don't even call it prep school, man. It was, because you know, it's closed down now, mm -hmm. but we had like two, three hundred people in the school. Mm -hmm. Like, in the whole school, like the school was from elementary all the way to high school. Like, in my, in my junior class, we had nine people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was different as that. Like, it wasn't, and then like the Cowboys. Did y'all play anybody good? We used to have to schedule our own game. So it was yeah. like, we was calling people like, hey, like, can we get a game in? Like, we didn't have a schedule, like, mm -hmm. at all until, like, mid-season. It's like mid-season, that's when we actually started to get a schedule. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't have, like, certain teams that was in our division that we played. We just played like all sorts just, of teams. Yeah, 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 like we played Norcom, the year they had Macklin, DeGroat, the it was monsters. Like, and we ended up playing them how, I don't know, but we were, <laughs> like, it was, it was a good game though, because we had, we had a seven foot on our squad, Justin Ramsey and my boy Xavier. I don't know where he had, man. I hope he's doing good too, man. But he was nasty, he was left handed, he was nasty. And I remember when we played uh, Norcom, we probably had like 38 when we played Norcom at Norcom. That game was crazy packed. We played Atlantic Shores, we played um, Ryan Academy. I didn't even know Atlantic Shores was right there. I thought it was always a church. I always thought Until it was. Until went there, I didn't know what. Was I always thought it was too, but then when we played them, this is when we played them, they wasn't like. The Atlantic Shores. Yeah, like they was like. The people that was on their team, like, they just started learning how to play mm -hmm. basketball. Like, that that was, like, the caliber of teams we used to play on a daily basis. It was like, we go out there and it's like, the teams that we're playing, dog, it's literally like, y'all got to be kids. <laughs> like, y'all got to be kids. It's like these kids just started learning how to play. And we got a whole seven foot on our team. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was it was weird. Yo. We was beating people like 60 points sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So it was weird. Like, but then when we started actually getting... Hey, our record started getting good. We started playing actual good teams. Like we played Booker T at um at Calvary, and we wouldn't they beat us in overtime. But so like, cause we had a squad, you know what I'm saying? Like, but we was just the private school shit. Like we didn't have no. So that was around the time when like it was like 
Calvary, Ryan Academy. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I, I know like B Shaw played for Ryan Academy. He's yeah. The only person I know that played for Ryan Shaw Academy. B Shaw played for Ryan Academy, then Ryan mm -hmm. Adams. The one that, that died. Oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. He played yeah. for Ryan Academy too. Yeah, we played it, um, I want to say we was in like West Virginia or some shit. And we made it to our, um, like I guess all like divisional nationals or some shit like that. So we get out there, yo, and they they talking about his white boy. He had like he reminded me from um, uh, what's the white boy that was to play with Gonzaga? Adam. Oh yeah, Adam. Uh, and he starts smoking coke when he got uh -huh. LA. <laughs> I know you talking about that. Yeah, he reminded me of him. Uh -huh. And um, he was having like thirty something a game, yo. We was like, all right, so we watching him play the game before us. Man, this dude, it was literally a tie game. He got, first he hit like three threes to get beaten back in the game, tie the game up. He had like 40 at this time. Got a steal, and he ended the game, bro, off a windmill dunk. <laughs> like, if we sitting there watching this, I'm like, yo, he had committed to um, Purdue. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what happened to him after that, but and then that's when I started saying, okay, like this private school joint is like, they, they, it is some better, you know what I'm saying, some schools out there because we just, the right yeah, because the schools that we were seeing was like nothing, like it was like in the way, but so when we started going to these tournaments and stuff, we started seeing like these private schools that was nice, but we won't, we'll never see these teams, you know what I'm saying, like so when I was at Calvary, like after the year was over, like, like I said, man, like I, I went to class like three times a week, bro. like, like I barely went to class because uh -huh. They, cause like we was all they had at, at Calvary, so they kind of let us really do whatever we wanted to, bro. Like the teacher used to come to us and be like, "Look, here's your, here's all your work for the year. Like if you do this, this whole packet, turn it back to me. This is your grade for the year, type thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was like easy like that, and it was, you know, I kind of was real with my mom, like, yo, like mom, not even going, out. and I got straight A's. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like straight A's. Like I bring my poor call my mom. I'm like, oh, like, I'm glad I put you here. I was looking at her like, come on. But then, you know, she started seeing, like I started getting in trouble and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Being there, what I thought, you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? It was just too easy. Like I had to be real with my mom. And then it was like the basketball wasn't, it wasn't no level of competition. So I didn't really see. Yourself getting better? Right, like, cause it was so easy. Like I was just dunking everything, like. <laughs> <laughs> everything it was throwing lobs like crazy everything was a dunk like every time i scored it was a dunk like it was just it was real easy bro like and it was like i started getting other schools like lake teller coach started coming to me you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. of course d nice just coming me like yo why you still here like you can go somewhere else so i was like man i need to get back to public school i think that'd be my best option what made what made you pick taller out of other schools I know Coach Mint won't come and do you because Coach Mint don't try to nah. follow nobody. The crazy thing is, yo, it was really like, cause you know, I've been knowing AJ since I was five. You know what I'm saying? Like AJ grew up, yeah, like me and AJ went to the same elementary school together. You know what I'm saying? Like we've been knowing each other since we was little. So like I said, when I started playing AAU, I was playing with AJ, Kelly, all of them. So as I was at Calvary, you know what I'm saying? We was going to practice in the summertime. I was talking about Calvary. And I was like, man, you need to come to toe, we come to toe, we come to toe. I'm like, man, I don't know. I think I might go back to last time. Started going, um, working out with Coach Kelly. Um, during the summertime, me and Mike Anderson we used to go work out with Coach Kelly all the time. And, um, I just ain't never like Rob vibe no more, man. Like, mm -hmm. like he ain't really like. I, I felt like when we left, he ain't really cared if we left for real. You know, so or he or if we cared, he had a ill ill vibe towards us because we left. Okay. Like maybe Twan. But the previous year they went to the state, ten region, but they right. kept losing the Woodside. Right. Um, you know what I'm saying? Cause Rob just wanted all the football players to play. Yeah, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? Like he had hoopers, but then he had some people that was just football players and athletes. Don't get me wrong, Percy was both. Like yeah. he deserved to be on the floor. Like Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Owens, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Bub, like all like those are my dogs. It's like they need to be on that basketball court. Man. <laughs> like stick to football, man. Like but Rob used to keep them on the floor. It's like but you had real hoopers, you know what I'm saying? That you just had sitting on the bench, you know what I'm saying? But when it got down to times like that, you know what I'm saying? I I think the one the one time they took the L, the person tried to dunk on the whole team, right? and he should have just laid it up. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the one time he lost. But the other times it was like those football players you got, they smart individuals, but they not. Who was he running into Stefan and them like uh -huh. <laughs> them boys? Who, you know what I'm saying? Like they they do that. They had a squad, so it was like that was his issue. But when I started like, trying to choose a school, man, like, it was literally like I was gonna go to Ocean Lakes because 
Laron, right. like I just because I wanted, I was I, Now that I look back at it, it, I felt like you know what I'm saying. The decision, like who you who you really want to go who with, like yeah. which group of friends you really want to go who with, because that's what it was about. Because I had literally everybody that played on our team, you know, went to every school for real. After that year was over, you know, um, we had got I had got close with Kelly and AJ, so we used to always hang out all the time. So then I was like, you know what, man, I might go to Tallboy, you know, like. Like, let me just go to Tall right up the street from the club. It ain't right up the street. I was like, I won't go on the land sound. Uh-huh. Really ain't want to go to Green Run, because if I'd have been to Green Run, I'd have been hanging out with some people I wasn't supposed to be hanging out with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, land sound, the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, man, let me go to Tallwood. And when I went to Tallwood, though, bro, it was like crazy. What was your I, first impression? I was, <laughs> Man, listen. The first day at Tallwood, man. Oh, let's rewind back, first of all. Like, but when I went to, right? you played summer league with us, didn't yeah. You? So, yeah. So when I played summer league with y'all, like that's what like battle the basketball level was like. All right, I can rock with this team. Like I can rock with everybody. I just remember when we played summer league at Virginia Westland and we played Bayside. Oh yeah. Man, I think I threw about <laughs> twenty alleys that game. <laughs> yes, sir. Like you, between you, Kelly Vaughn, and then we had Myron Davis play. Yeah, the Myron too. played with us too. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. bro, that game was crazy. It was the way. I remember that. Damn, oh, bro, Can bro. you imagine, like the mixtape game, if it was a right? Man? And then the mixtape that you made, they took it down, man, because, because of the music. Man, man. I'd be looking for that drum, man. I'd I still like, got it on my computer somewhere. I'd be like, man, I gotta change this. Change the music. But yeah, the, 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 um, if it was mixtape said like, if it was social media was heavy back then, like I, we had MySpace and it. But if somebody was recording, right, 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 it made it easy because before you know it was a tape. Then I had to get the, so I had to find a way to get the tape to the computer. Right, right. I don't, I don't know how you made that work. Processes. I don't know how you made that work. Because when you made that, when you made that, that's what got me to college. For real. Real that tape. But we could talk about that later. But um, <laughs> but yeah um. But the uh, but going to Tall like when I when I stepped foot in the school, uh-huh. man, it was a good decision, man. It was a lot of it was a lot of women in there, man. Like, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of women in Tallwood, man. So it was a good decision. Like, last time I had them too, but first thing I never we went to um we was went to AJ crib because I because what happened how I even got to be able to go to Tallwood is because I had to my mom had to give up custody. Of me to Kelly, to oh. Kelly's parents, cause I live in it, it. It usually ain't that hard to just switch districts like that, but Coach Robin made it that hard for me because mm-hmm. it was had some ill feelings that I'm going to Tallwood instead of going back to Lansdowne. Okay. Because when I was, cause I live in Lansdowne Meadows, so I was going to go train with Coach Kelly and them, and I'm telling them like, yo, I'm about to go to Tallwood, I'm about to go to Tallwood. They're like, how you gotta go to Tallwood? We live out here, like, right? ain't no way you going to Tallwood, like. Yeah. You gotta go last time. They was like, we can see you going to kill him. Cause it's in your dish. I'm like, nah, I don't want to talk with it. <laughs> like, I'm like oh, okay. So then my when my mom went finally tried to do the paperwork and everything. We would just we wrote just Kelly's address down there. Everything was fine. It was like, oh yeah, you good? Or two, three weeks later, my mom got a call like, nah, like we the, the transfer is not gonna be able to go through. Yeah, yeah. We like, wow. It was like, you know, we we heard that you, you know, that he doesn't live. At this address, mm-hmm. he lives over here. And we're like, where y'all hear this from? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, where, where, I don't, like, where y'all hear this from, man? Like, hey, Coach Ross told Like, where y'all hear this? Like, I, we don't know. Who, I, I ain't gonna, we don't know who it was, but he had something to do with. It, I just feel like because it's like, all right, now I ain't no top prospect. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody calling and check in on me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because all you had to, all we really had to do was just go down there. Yo, I didn't have to. I didn't have no. I like my IDs or. Nothing to show them. Like my mom just had to fill out the paperwork, uh-huh. proof of mail, and we. My mom Ben did that because my mom was just my mom. We, we ain't stupid, so my mom just had some bills sent them. Miss Julie crib with the address up there. Ben had that junk taken care of, so we went there with the, all the proof of address, all that. So I said, then two weeks later they get a call like, nah, nah we said like, so it was like they like did a real live like investigation to see where yeah. I lived. Yeah, so. It was like, dang, that's why we had to take it to the extreme of mm-hmm. my mom giving up custody. Because yeah, yeah. any any other way, we would have let it happen. This before, this before the academy, so you right. can't just go right. to school. It, it, it had, my mom had to literally and take the time, take time out to really think about uh-huh. giving up custody of your child just so you can go hoop. Like, you that's know what I'm saying? Like, because any other time, you ain't got to do none of that. You know what I'm saying? Just go to the school, go wherever you want to go. That's how New York is. You know what I'm saying? Basically, 
get to, but you gotta like fill out an application and you get to go to any school you want to. See, that's what I'm saying. But that's what it should be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter as long as you can get to and from school, it should be good. But nah, bro, we had to take it to the extreme. And my mom was like, that was that was hard for my mom to do, even though I was seven, I was and even though she knew it was just for basketball, right? Still just signing some papers over, right? So what if that come out later in life? You know what I'm saying? Right, anything. Like say I'd have been in the league now, like it was oh yeah, my, that could have been a headline. Like yeah. his mom had to give up custody. You know what I'm saying? Like it's anything, but it's just um that was it was my mom. She hated that she had to do that though, even though because my mom was always traveling. Yeah. She was never home. You know what I'm saying? So she was always traveling. So she really. She, she cared, but it, I think it hurt her more because she knew she was traveling so much and she got to give up custody just so I can go to a certain school, you know what I'm saying? So I was like home with myself most of the time. Like I had my own car at like 15, like, so living at Kelly house wasn't like, it wasn't, I wasn't really living there all the time because I would be at my crib and I just drive to school yeah. and then, you know, my mom, like, I, She'll call me like, why you ain't staying over there? And I stay, all right, I'm going to stay over at Kelly House. Like, <laughs> they wouldn't let me have my car over there because his mom was mad strict. Yeah, okay. Like, super strict. So I, if I had my car, I'd leave it at AJ Crib, you know what I'm saying, or something, and then ride with Kelly to his house. Coming to Tahoe was like a whole nother world, bro. Like, it was literally like I went to, I really just changed states uh -huh. and went to a different school. Like, last time it was really like you had the football team. Like, that was like a whole different side of Lansdowne, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you had Percy, Damon, all of them. Even though I was cool with all of them, it was literally like, it was them and then the Lansdowne You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it was literally like they, and you know, football team was deep, so they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, you go, the, you go in the lunchroom, it's all of them together. Like, you know what I'm saying? They take over one whole side of the lunchroom type jump. Like, and don't really go over there, you ain't really cool with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, coming to talk was definitely more of a, a family type of environment. Like you had those, you know, couple people that everybody really ain't rock with, or people that had beef and this and that third. But like the people that I first initially, you know, AJ, you, Juice, you know, I did outside of basketball, like all the crew. And like when I first met all of y'all, like that jump just like it felt, <clears throat> it clicked, it, it gelled. So that jump was dope. It was real dope. I loved it. And then it was like, shit, when I finally like, cause I met Matt, met people like, through when he was in summer league, uh -huh. but like we, I wasn't around him all the time. Yeah, he used to never really be there. He used to be always Coach Taylor, right. Coach Jern. Right. So then when we got to school and I started being there all the time and started, you know, talking to men all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like my my aura with him changed a lot. Like he was he was real solid. You know what I'm saying? Like real solid. Like Rob, he was just one of them dudes. Like I didn't really know about him too. Like I don't really, he, he was iffy. Like he had too much of his favorites and. He'll turn on you quick type thing. Like that's how I just thought about Rob. Coach Kelly was always solid, you know what I'm saying? Like he was always solid, but you know, Coach Mint was just he, he was had a different feel to him. But getting told, man, it was like that song was an album. And then seeing how nice he was, it was like, yo. Out the gate. We about you gotta you gotta take it back though, cause the first, like our first when everybody made the team or whatever, you get hurt. Oh my god. <laughs> How you feel about that? You get hurt. You, Man, you and Willis. Willis. <laughs> to this day, bro, you still got some bad blood with me, man. For real, you man. You and Willis collide in practice. You break your collarbone. Yeah, man. So how, like, how many games you set up? Twelve. Twelve. That's first, what I see. It has to. I saw the senior year, bro. Like the whole time, bro. Like we in there, like practice coming. Like I said summer leagues. I was like, oh yeah, we about to win this, y'all, hands down. Then I never forget that, man, with a loose ball. I'm going to go get the loose ball, and it's practice. You know, like, AI, this is, we talk about practice. Uh -huh. And Willis is going <laughs> a thousand miles per hour. And this is right before the first game of the season. Yeah. This was a game, but the practice before the uh -huh. first game of the season. So I'm going to get the ball. I'm just like, last days we're going to pick it up because it was already out of bounds. Boom, he comes running to me, man. That jump pops so hard, and you can hear it. Like, it was like, pow. Man, I was bent down and I couldn't get up because every time I kept getting up, my bone was trying to poke through my skin. Because when it broke, it broke like this. Most people don't like just break, you know what I'm saying, downwards or whatever, but mine broke like this. So it was trying to poke out my skin. So I kept like, trying to lift up. That jump was kept poking out. I was like, ah, I'm man. I get into the um, back and they, you know, they was like, oh yeah, this jump broke. Like, it, you can still see it to this day. Like, so I'm just sitting in the hospital, man. I'm like, crying my ass off bro like damn man like, I ain't, 
about to be able to play my senior year. Here I we know. go. That's here crazy. we go with this. It was like bad luck. I was like, man, here we go with this <laughs> shit. Then Coach Mint came up there. I was talking to Coach Mint. Coach Mint even shed a tear that shit, yo, because when they did the X-rays, and Coach Mint stayed there the whole time. The X-rays, he showed the X-rays, and they was like, yeah, like you gonna be at least about a good five, six months. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? They're like, yeah. So man, it was the hardest day coming back in that gym man, with that sling on. I had to sit there, and you know, Jern had to step up to be a starter. I was Jern his freshman year. Freshman year had to come in, and you know, he, he was, got sat down so quick. He had to <laughs> man, because Jern was his mental wasn't there. Yeah, man. he was too scary. Yet. Yeah, uh -huh. he was too scary at that time, yo. So that's why I kept trying to talk to him. Maybe like, yo, like don't be nervous out here, bro. Like this, who especially that game, first game of the season at Moore. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was a tough environment for a freshman to be in, though. Like, a crazy thing is, yo, like, not even for, like, when I was at private school, bro, like, granted, like, the Norcom game was packed. Mm -hmm. We played Booker T at Calvary, was packed with um, Calvary's gym is not as big, so, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It really wasn't, you know, a lot of people. That Mori game was the biggest game I've been in, and I didn't even play, you know what I'm saying? So I can only imagine how it was for Jeremy, you know what I'm saying, going to a crowd like that. And at Mori, like, and that crowd was ready to fight every crowd. Yeah, they, they, they knew, cause it was that, man, that game right there, man, that was like the hardest thing for me to do. Bro. Like, I even got to the point where I took my sling off, bro. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm in that zone, like, with my, with my <laughs> suit, suit on, trying to feel like, yo, I think I'm good next game. You know? like, I think I might be all right next game, because it was like, I couldn't do it, bro. Like, yeah, that Especially was, like, like the first quarter, we was losing by like, man, I think we scored like double digits. Darius was like, it was like seven and a half, yeah, like seven that, points or something. That game was so like intense, bro, to the uh -oh. end. Like, nail biter all the way to the end, bro. And then when Juice flew them free throws. <laughs> man, yo, when he flew that free, man, he missed the first one. I said, oh, shit, it is. And then, then he, I seen it in him, because you know Juice get mad quick. Uh -huh. So I see him, he got mad, I was like, yeah, they, they, they in his head, because of the, the side I was talking about this shit, I was like, yeah, they in his head, man, he about to fluke this shit, he about to fluke it, and he missed it, I said, oh, man, that boy went straight to the sideline, <laughs> tried to fight, that joke was funny, man, but that was like, that was the game that we needed, though, like, that was like the perfect yeah, first game, we could lose. yeah, that was like the perfect first game to have, bro, against Moore, and Moore was like, ranked mm -hmm. at that time in, in the state, Moore was always good. Cause I, remember, I remember I played varsity my freshman year, so I seen them when they had uh, Wiggins and yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. Oh my God! It bro. was tough then. It, it was, was it was, was tough then. Yeah. So and but, but, but more, but more he had Cam, Sean, and Prince. Yo, they yeah, was tough. Prince. Yes. Oh my God! It what was, happened to him? He was tough. Do you know how big Prince is now? Oh, big Prince probably weighed about three three twenty. <laughs> Yeah. He was so tough, But man. you know he went to Tech and played tight end. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I he was full. But yeah, yeah, he yeah. went to Tech and played. Man, that's when him and Cam went. Yeah, yeah. so when he, when he got to Tech, you know, so they put that weight on him and he just blew up. So now it's like he's big, big mm -hmm. now. But he, but yeah, they, oh, he is tough. They, they all was tough. Yo, Cam was a sharp shooter. Sean was just everything. Yeah. Prince was just linky. They had Reggie there. They had, um, that's why I was all right, though. Like, but they call with Sean Prince and, and Cam, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was they big three. Mm -hmm. After that, it kind of was like, ah, they all right. You know what I'm saying? But it was that was good, though. That was, like, tough to see them in that first game because we needed that, though. Like, and then seeing, like, how mad Coach Mint was because we literally blew the game, for yeah, real. Yeah. And then everybody was in foul trouble. And then I was like, yo, like, as it kept going on, you're like, that might have been the toughest jump because I was like, now, I kept going home after the games and stuff, and I'm like, well, I ain't going to college no more, man. Like, I might have <laughs> just sit on the bench for the rest of the year, just watch my boys. Like, because when I was at Calvary, yo, like, I was beating myself up because when I was at Calvary, I had a choice to go back a year. And you ain't do that? Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> nah, like, so I went to Calvary as a junior, but I could have went as a sophomore. I could have redid my sophomore year all over again. I was like, nah, I'm trying to graduate on time with all my friends, da da da. And I was so I graduated early, I graduated at seventeen. You know what I'm saying? Like I could have went to Tallwood as a junior mm -hmm. instead of a senior. Like so, if that would have my junior. Year, I'd be like, ah, that's so good. Like, well, not that I'm good, but I know I still got to know another senior yeah. year. You know what I'm saying? So I used to go home and be like, man, damn, dog. Like my senior year, man, I got to sit out all these games. Like, 
Like, I'm glad that most of the games, though, was against the beach. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? We didn't play a lot of out-of-district games. Nah, the only game that we played that I uh, that we couldn't play, I played the first Granby game. You ain't played against the first last time game either. No, at yeah, home. yeah. I'm, I didn't play against that last time game at home because Percy played that game. Mm-hmm. I didn't play that game. I don't know when Percy came in the gym and they and they were screaming out Oak Tree because they had just it wasn't Oak Tree oh, or Oakton, Oakton or something Oakton. like that. They, they, lost. Lost. they lost in the state championship. Yeah, game. yeah, that because they Oakton had that running back. And <laughs> and our principal made our fans take the Oakton shirts off. Yeah, I don't because know what it was. Percy, Percy was a man. Percy was a legend. That, 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 like two sports, uh-huh. you know, all tie order, two sports. You know, saying like he was, he was. He was different, man. That dude was different, yo. Like, and then the crazy thing is, when I went to Tallwood, like, I lost a lot of friends. Like, I didn't lose friendships with people because it wasn't like, you know, we got the beef in it. Just that I wasn't around no more. Like, I literally like a lot of the people that went that was cool with that last time. As soon as I went to Tallwood, well, as soon as I went to Calvary, I kind of lost contact with everybody because you know I got a whole new group of friends now. And Calvary was out in Norfolk, so I was out in Norfolk all the time. Then I went to Tallwood. And then, you know, I was living up Kelly, out in College Park, you know what I'm saying? So it was, I was never out there no more. So my first time I used to seeing these Lansdowne cats and everything was like on the court, on the court you know what I'm saying? It was all Did cool. they like, speak? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, me and Percy used to joke all the time because, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, me and him grew up with each other since we was five. So every time we used to see Lansdowne, y'all used to joke. And I used to go every time we used to, um, my first game we played Lansdowne, at Lansdowne. I kept, every time I would run past Coach Rob, I would slap him on the ass. Cause I was, I just wanted to annoy the shit out of my one on eight bench and sat on eight bench and sat over there talking because Percy won't play again. So I sat on eight bench talking to Percy. He's like, yo, come on, Mike. You know you can't be over there. I'm like, well, I, want to y'all. Like, I was just talking shit that game. Yo. Hey, you caught a put back dump. On and your dad went crazy. Oh yeah, dog. That, that <laughs> Bro, motherfucker, man. That? That, the crazy thing is, yo. That crowd was so out crowd, man. It was, was wild. It was wild, yo. I gave it so day. electric, bro. It was so electric. But the thing is about pops, man, like. At that time, he was coming to the land to the tall games. Mm-hmm. I didn't talk to him. Like me and him wasn't vibing. You know what I'm saying? Cause my dad was on drugs hard. Okay. So when I went to tall, like he he came to my Calvary. Like when he first he first started coming to my games, my um like, when I was at Calvary, like the last couple of my games then. But then um when I went to Tallwood, like I like me and him didn't talk at all. Like he would come to the game. I wouldn't say shit to him. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. for a while, yeah. Like for a while, I would like. Throughout the beginning, when I first started coming back to play, like I wouldn't talk to him at all. Or he'll come over there and you know just let me know he's here. Like you not know, like, that's what's up. Like my mom didn't fuck with him at all. Like you know what I'm saying. But he knew that I didn't have nobody that was coming to the games. My mom was always gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Like my mom was there, she'll be there. But then you know he was just and, you know him. He he wild any goddamn way. So him being able to just see me hoop, you know what I'm saying. That was the time of his life. So I never forget that time when we the first time I seen that he or even realized that the wild that he used to do, bro. Who was that? Um, <laughs> I think who was that? It was, no, we was yeah, it was at home game. It was at Tallwood, and um, I had dunk, and then I came to the bench. They called a the timeout. I was sitting on the bench, and I looked over, and my dad had his shirt off, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I looked at him like. Hey, it was like we played against like sales. I don't know who it was, but I remember. Because you had some big dunks. I think your first I think the first game you came at like Salem at home. No, that was Salem at home was homecoming. I okay. remember that. I think the first game we played back when we played Ocean Lakes. Oh. And I had I had two dunks at that game. Because I remember them them highlight tapes. <laughs> but uh but yeah, I'm looking like what the then I said, then all, oh, your dad used to run around the gym every and dunk. And then who gonna say something to him? I like, know, he's, he's so big. <laughs> he's too big, yo. So it was like, everybody like, let him do Because I remember seeing the security guards like come to him a couple times, but then it was like, after a while, they stopped and just let him do what he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the cop was just be the same cop at every game. Yeah. So you knew it was your dad. Yeah, so then he used to come to me and be like, man, tell your dad to chill out today, man. I just remember like, I got nothing to do with him, man. Yeah, that's, that's what you had to do, man. You gotta stop him, control him. But it was dope seeing that, though, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, like my dad, you know, he was always in my life. Don't get me wrong, but he was on drugs heavy, you know what I'm saying? So for a while, I didn't see him. I wasn't, you know what I mean, never was around him. So it was dope seeing him, like, Interact like that. Tight for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he started getting shirts made. Mm-hmm. Then Coach Mint gave him a jersey. He gave him one of the old Tallwood jerseys. He used to wear that joint all the time. Uh-huh. 
So it like it was dope seeing, especially like that one time. <laughs> this was when the this is when everybody in the seven five seven knows about my dad from this moment. <laughs> <laughs> we was at Churchman, bro, and we was playing against uh Franklin County. Mm -hmm. And I caught a tip back done. They said my dad, you know the bleachers of Churchman is high. high. They said my dad jumped over the <laughs> side of the business. <laughs> It ran up and down the jump like this twice, yo. He said they tried to, they grabbed him and kicked him out. And then, and then so my dad, they say, this is what we do, your dad was the goat, because your dad comes back in. They just kicked him out now. Uh -huh. Your dad comes back in with your mom and your sister. Like, like how? They just kicked him out, but he come back in with your mom and your sister, like, and sit back down. I'm like, yo. I don't know. Like, literally after the game, everybody was like, yo, your dad is crazy, yo. Like, I'm like, man. They say he jumped literally off the side of the bleachers because it was like, you know, he was sitting at the top. Uh -huh. So he couldn't get down. It was like his energy level just went to, to an all time high. So he didn't want to interrupt nobody. So he just jumped. And mind you, he's 55, bro. Like, he young. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's 60 something now. So, uh -huh. so it's like, damn, bro. Like, I am. <laughs> like, dude was crazy. But that's when literally, like, now, no matter what city I'm in or what person played at this school, they know about my dad. Even if we haven't even played them, like, they just came to a Tallwood game. They seen my dad like, so it's dope. Sit, like to this day, like even but even like if I go to Mount Olive, they know about my dad because he used to do the same shit in college. Uh -huh. He used to do the same shit like I was like my my oh, my first coach used to hate it. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he literally had to tell my dad like, could you not you know do all that? My dad was loud, loudest person in the gym. Uh -huh. He standing up. You know what I'm saying? Like he that was that was just who he was. And my first head coach he used to. Real out hate that Like my dad used to hate coming to the games because you know what I'm saying they used to try to control him. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you know my olive was a little different. That was it was that school was a little different. Well, what what you uh what was your most memorable moment playing at Tallwood in that 2006 time? Cause that was some good times. One of them I hate talking about, but the first <laughs> one, Booker T at uh, Churchman. Yeah, 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 that was good. That was a hell of a game, cause that was one of those games where it's like, we was, cause this was what, game number two, three. What? When we played Booker T. Yeah, this was the third time seeing each other. That was the second time. That was the second time we played them um, at Virginia Wesleyan. We played Virginia Wesleyan. That was the first time we didn't know they were good too. We right, just right, 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 right. And then that was. And then we only won by one point when we beat them there. Right. But then we played them. We seen them there. Yeah. So we played them that time, like. Booker T had all this buzz, we had uh -huh. all this buzz. So it's like, literally when we played them, you know, like I remember us in warm up lines, yo. I remember people taking bets, like Giovanni yeah, and them. Like, yeah, like we was in one line, they was telling us like, yo, uh -huh. people are still trying to get in. Like in the, the stadium, church was already packed. It was like, yo, people still trying to get in. That game was like, in warm up lines was like, wow <laughs> to me. like. And then I also had some going with the girl in the stands. That was that was terrible. <laughs> that was, I've been woke lies and some shit's going on. I'm like, oh shit. So I'm trying to stay focused, but that was a whole nother story, you know what I'm saying? But um but it was just so crazy like seeing this like how packed it was in there, bro. Like people were standing up all around the mm -hmm. joint. And churchman is huge. So yeah, it was especially like especially when they got all the sides up. Right, yeah. all they had all the sides up. And then the top was, level. People yeah. were still having to stand up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That game was different yo and then you know what i'm saying i think just the energy of that game and then you know booker t and d nice and the energy that they give off you know what I'm saying? they talk shit you know what i'm saying and then everybody used to look at tallwood and the beach that's soft but you know i said that year we was that moment it's no like nah bro like you got into the fight with maury you know what i'm yeah. saying you got into the fight with salem you know what i'm saying so it was like we was Niggas was trying us, you know what I'm saying? They was trying us a lot, you know what I'm saying? So we was just letting people know, like, nah, bro, like, this is not, we not that what y'all thinking this is. So when we played Booker T, that was just, that game right there, the expectation level and everything was at a different at a different level. So that that game was, like, tough, like, because every bucket was, like, trading buckets. Mm -hmm. Like, when I tell you, like, every, every loose ball, everybody dive on the floor, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I fell in, I remember I tried to get a block and fell into the stands one time, like it was just like, it felt like a game like you was playing it like, 
on the movie or something shit. like that's and I know that it's, it's crazy because the way the season ended up you said mentioned earlier juice missed the free throws and it came down and came back came on the line to the back on the line, back on the line. he line. made both of them cash did you know what I'm saying like that, and what, we won that, by one point again and that's what I'm saying like it, it should be like a movie bro like mm -hmm. just playing it back like that whole total year bro felt like a movie bro like real shit like that from, from the time period bro when we was literally we was at Kelly's house, me, Kelly, AJ, and Juice, and we getting calls, prank calls, mm -hmm. and this girl's on the phone like, can we speak to Kelly? And we like, yeah, you right here. They're like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> it was like to the point like that, bro. Like, and me sitting in the house like, yo, you sitting there like, yo, meet us here, meet us here. And we really went and met the girls, and it was really some girls. Like, and it's like, yo, why y'all call us block? Oh, because we didn't want to think y'all was crazy. We like, damn, like, <laughs> this is basketball about to get us. Like, we felt like, oh, he got game or something, bro. Like, that's how the joint felt, bro. Like so, the whole year was just like amazing, bro. But then the second moment was Herndon. I still can't. I got the tape. I still can't watch it. Man, I, I got the tape. Even yeah, though I can't it, watch it, even though it's like a, a fucked up time that I, you know what I mean that I hate. Uh -huh. That was still like a great moment, bro. Because it's like you know we went through a lot to get there. We got there, and then you know what I'm saying, Saudi Reynolds. You know, we all we gotta do is beat them. Then we go see there was them. so many rumors behind his name or like all the stuff he did. He, he, he couldn't play on Wednesday. Uh -huh. like, yeah, because he had to go to church. Uh -huh. Yeah, he ain't had to practice. Like it was a whole bunch of stuff. Like and, and the crazy thing is, it was coming from my coaches and stuff sometimes. Right. Like like and then so I think that's what kind of gave was like, oh, give a damn about who the fuck he is, uh -huh. bro. Like. But when we came out there, and he came on that it was scorched. I was, I was like, like, oh, he had to be hot today. Always, man, when he hit Jern with the, the no dribble snatch back at the beginning of the game, when he hit the three, I said, oh my gosh, here we go. <laughs> here we go, man. And then we started just throwing all different types of Defense, the defenses yeah. at him. And he was still, I mean, we, we didn't lock him up, but we slowed him down. Slowed him down a little because we went to double overtime and no. he had, what, 32, mm -hmm. 36 or something like that. So we slowed him down. But the way that jump ended, man. Damn, AJ Vaughn. <laughs> AJ. <laughs> yeah, bro. I pass it to him. I yeah. take, I'll take some responsibility, yes, bro. Yes, they, you, and AJ. Y'all killed this, man. But I think Coach Mitch should have called a timeout. One of our best players on the team got the ball in his hand for seven seconds. Right. He should have called a timeout. You giving them an opportunity to steal the ball. Now. Right. Right. I get it. <laughs> that's, that's and then we ran the same play three times. When it, you know what I'm saying? But you, you Maury. Right. But, uh, but the thing is, the play we couldn't nobody stop it. So why not? No, they stopped to, it that game. They stopped it. They went to the wrong person. <laughs> That's why. Nobody was open. Man, time out again. Mm -mm. That's the play you throw it to him. And then and he it. You get to you. Come on, bro. Not I still know all the coach big plays. But we should have gave the handoff to Darius. He's catching. He throw the back door the handoff. Mm -hmm. But at that time, AJ caught that ball and then. Man, I'm not even mad if you threw him the ball. It's just the fact that he caught the ball and tried to put it on the yeah, floor. Yeah, yeah, Like, didn't even look. He just caught it and went straight to the floor. Like, he didn't even try to look for the handoff. Mm -hmm. Look to even just shoot it or anything. He just caught it, put it right on the floor, got plucked. Like, bro, when I tell you, as I'm watching dudes run down for that layup, yo, I'm literally just like, no. So I dropped then, to my knees, bro. I remember. I will say. So oh my God! And then we still had another play and around. I, turned, I caught it at at the half court, turned around and chucked it. Bro, that jump bounced, boom, boom. I was like, oh, I thought it was cash, bro. I just knew it. I was like, yo, it would have been the perfect way to end. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, and I never forget that. We was all in the locker room crying, shit, man. I got, got home the next day, or woke up the next morning. I think I cried until I remember we broke down on the way home. Yes, sir. I, cried, I was crying the whole time. <laughs> And then we get off the bus and all these people. All these people out there. Man, I was like, man. Then we, then we go out to eat. I don't, we went to that. It was like the next day, I thought. We went to Kelly's or something. Uh-huh. Man, I got home the next morning. The next morning I woke up, man, my mom. I had the, uh, the newspaper yeah. laying on my bed with me laying in the middle of the court. I was uh -huh. like, I'm sitting there like, yo, mom, can you take that? I don't, I don't want to see that. She was I, like, I didn't go to school the next day. That was it. Yeah. And they, cause they let us though. Like, they didn't buy, you know what I'm saying? Like, they, we deserved it, but, bro, that don't hurt. Because we were supposed to then we look and see. Because they asked us if we want to go to the game. Mm -hmm. But continue them jump. Yeah. Nah, I'm not going to that. Bro, 
Like, I'm not going to go watch these niggas win this. Because I knew they was going to beat them, though. Man, I wasn't even looking at this one, bro. Like, <clears throat> when I hit it, bro, like, it was like, oh, like, I was like, I was real out of shock, bro, for real. Because I ain't hit nothing on a game. Like, and they won't like people on, like, I was getting looks. It just said, that was just one of them games where nothing was falling, bro. So, when I hit it, I was like, like, that's what, in the paper, bro, my face was like, <laughs> I was shocked, like, oh, <laughs> shit, like, this is over, like, it was crazy, because, you know, coming up, that down the line, Sean ended up being my roommate in college. Yeah, yeah, like, 20 miles. That game, my next time ever seeing him was the day that he walked into the dorm room. <laughs> like, like, literally, I'm sitting in my door while I'm packing, and he walks in that shit, be like, Oh, this motherfucker here. I'm like, it was good. No, he still ain't want to dap me up, bro. For real? Yeah, he was still hot about that shit for the longest time. It was funny, though. How do you feel like Coach Mint made that bond? Like, having the dinners and all of that? Did you yeah. think that helped? Yeah, yeah. you're like, because a lot of teams don't doing that, though. Like, when I got to college, my coach used to do that same thing because it does help, though, bro. Like, because you're just really bringing, you put, you're bringing people together that probably won't chill together outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the thing was about us, even though the dinners was cool, but we already are all chilled anyway. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I think that's what made our team a lot better because we could talk to each other like on the court. Our communication was easy on the court. So it's like we knew what each other's like game was. And I think that we just, the our whole team just had a high basketball IQ period because like, we would know when Darius is about to shoot, or we know what he about to do. Like we would know all your patented moves and where you about to go. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we would know AV, like uh -huh. what he, what he is, what he not. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we would know Danny. We would know that that tight rope down the baseline. That's his shit. Like if he, if Danny tight rope down the baseline, somebody cut down the middle because it's always gonna be open. Like we just everybody just had a real high IQ for the game, bro. Like and you know Kelly was just. A lot of people was keen on Kelly a lot for a lot of things. And it helped a lot of us. It helped a lot of us out. You know what I'm saying? And it made, because the thing is, a lot of people were keen on Kelly, but then you got, we really got a whole team in that group. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like it was just Kelly, then it's like, okay, we'll let the surrounding people get off. Nah, like you couldn't let that happen with us. Like, because if you sit there and just be like, all right, we're just going to lock Kelly down and let everybody else get off, then Darius going to end up having 30. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that happened in the Green Run game, and then they was like, uh oh. We can't do that either. Right. You know what I'm saying? They right. tried it. Green at home. I think I had 17. Darius had like 18. Kelly had like 20. They tried it. Like a lot, but a lot of teams, that's what they that's what they came, they come out and do though. They come out with that strategy. Like, we're just gonna shut Kelly down and we're gonna have that make everybody else beat us. Alright. That ain't what y'all want with us. You know what I'm saying? So I think that just with us, like our bond, Coach Men had a lot to do with it because of, you know, those dinners, like, and then him having everybody else host one at their house or whatever. Yeah, so I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that made it a lot. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, Minton was a genius, man, you know, but I think that our, what kept ours together, though, was Coach T and Pop Jern. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Coach Mint was the face of this shit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, he tried to do the things that he wanted to, but I think everybody respected Coach T and Pop Jern way more than they did Mint. Like, Mint was definitely our coach. That was yeah. like, we ride, we roll for our coach, but Pop Journey and Coach T were like our pops. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was like our mentors. Like, those are the people like, Coach T say something and shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coach Mint say something. Because yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like you say that because they don't really talk so much. So right. they saying shut up, yeah, you shut we up. doing yeah. something wrong. Yeah. And then the crazy thing, I knew Coach, Coach T used to coach me and Aaron back in the day. Mm -hmm. So it was like when I ran to Coach T again, it was like, oh yeah, like this Coach T don't be playing with games. Like he had you on the line, mm -hmm. get on the line. Like you know, he used to love putting us on the line, man. But Coach Mint didn't really do those things. Like when it came to discipline us, like it was Coach T, mm -hmm. Pop Jern, you know what I'm saying? like. Coach Mint just be the one that's orchestrating it all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong, Coach Mint was definitely a, the glue of what we had. Well, not even the glue, but he was the, the front runner. He was our leader. But I, I think our glue, when it came to coach wise, was Pop Germ, RP Pop Germ, man, and, um, and Coach T. I think that's what kind of helped that glue keep going. And then, you know, it's like the bond that we already had mm -hmm. as a team. Like, 
you and Darius was close, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and AJ and Kelly was close. Me and Juice was real close, you know what I'm saying? So it was like everybody, even though everybody probably wasn't close with everybody, yeah. everybody had a group of people that they was real close to. Uh -huh. But then we always, always did a lot of things together, you know what I'm saying? So it was, that's why I said, Tallwood vibe was mad different, you know what I'm saying? Like, I went to college, I thought it was going to be the same way, but it won't. How, how'd you get to my Olive? Was that the only pe people recruiting at the time? Yeah, well, when I was in AAU, my so my junior year, that summer, me, Kelly, AJ, we all had hella recruits. Mm -hmm. We had Kelly had big time joints. Like Kelly, I remember uh, Blaine ODU coming to watch us. Uh, Kelly had a lot of big time, but but that was when we was at Tallwood. When yeah. we was at AAU, Kelly was getting busy then. That, that was like I said, that was like Kelly's breakout time for real. He was getting busy at AAU. So then when I um, but when we went to Tallwood, my first like when I got hurt. Like all of those schools that I had then, mm -hmm. you know, like I had George Washington. They was like a the front runner school that I was yeah, yeah, that yeah. I was trying to rock with, with GW. Oh, yeah, and um, GW fell off. Like they was like, ah, oh, damn, you got her eye and good. Like everybody, like went ghost, bro. Like, man. like and you know, signing period coming up. Like, uh -huh. Coach Mint used to send have to send tapes to them, but they weren't yeah, ever coming yeah. out. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Like, so, but then um. But I had a broke collarbone, Joey Higginbach, my coach of my Olives. I literally, I still had a broke collarbone. I wasn't even playing. He came to the game. It was probably like my sixth game that I sat out. He came to the game. He hollered at me and my mom after the game. <clears throat> he was like, yo, like I, I watched you play all AAU. You know, I came to all y'all summer league games. He like, yo, we like to offer you full ride scholarship. I'm like, for real? He was like, well, it's not a full ride. You know, D2, we can't give off full rides. You know what I'm saying? You can, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for you to, you know, room and board, but you got to pay for, like, your books and your meal plan and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, well, he's like, yeah, I'm like, but you know I, ain't, I can't play like right now. He's like, I see you play. Like, we would love to have you. And then that, to me, that was, like, yeah, the yeah. dopest thing. Like, all right, bet. Like, they, they really still even trying to rock with me. I ain't even playing. Like, no no telling if I'm going to come back the same player or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. So I was like, I'm gone. I was like, all right, cool. Like he was like, so what that mean? I was like, I'm, I'm coming. He was like, so right now you saying you coming? I was like, yeah, I'm coming. But then he was like, all right. So then I started retracking my way. I started playing. <laughs> and then you like, God damn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I started playing. I was like, damn, man. Balling. Like, oh, man. But you but just stay, you know. I was, cause I just verbally did it. You know what I'm saying? So it, I could have still backed out and um, George Washington hit me up again. And then George Washington wanted me to red shirt. And then I was like, ah, and then Coach Mick was like, you might, you know, you might go there, you might red shirt. After you red shirt, you might play, you might not play. You know what I'm saying? Scholarship mm -hmm. might be taken away. You know, anything, man. He's like, that. that's a different level. You know, that's also, that's that's downtown DC. Are you ready, you ready for that, man? Like, that's a whole different, that's a whole different ball game. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's George Washington, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, you know what I mean? Like that's. I think I would have went. I mean, I I, I would have went. Red shirt probably would have helped you. You know, it would have helped. You see, like Darius, you know, didn't get the red right. shirt, but Kelly red shirt. I mean, not Kelly. Uh, Kent, Kent. red shirt. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You see know? that, and that's the thing too. I think back, like, like y'all the same type of player. I should have went, but the thing was too, man. Like, it's kind of when you you know yourself, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because my mom. She was coming to me like, nah, son, like, you need to be somewhere where, you know what I'm saying, you can get your focus right. Because even when we was at Toa, bro, like, I, our whole team was ineligible at one point. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were always like, well, besides you, Darius, and all that, but we, we came in the locker room, everybody ineligible. You know what I'm saying? So, because we got them weekly reports. Yeah, so it's like, you know, like, my mind wasn't always there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was on the, the girls' head. Then I was like, okay, George watched like a red shirt, but I'm like, you know, different kind of level of, of school. I went there on a visit, and Kelly went with me actually, and we went down to visit, and it was dope, you know what I'm saying? But then it's like, ah, I don't know, man. I don't know what I still do. Then we, we get to my olive, mm -hmm. and with me and Plummer, <laughs> we roll down there together. Uh -huh. Man, we get to my olive, bro. Like, we drive, we get there, we pull up, we like, where the fuck are we at, yo? <laughs> like, literally, we and Plummer, like, no way. Plummer, as soon as we step out the car, Plummer's like, no way. I'm calling my coach right now, bro. Like, no way. I'm like, yo, chill, bro. Like, we will be all right, bro. Like, see what we did in, in 7-5, bro. We can come and do this out here in my hour. 
You're like, well, I can't do it. So, <laughs> we, go, we, go, we go orientation. Funny. We go orientation, bro. And he's like, we look at the rival. It's nothing but white people. It's like the basketball team is like the only black people in the uh -huh. school, bro. Like, and we're like, what the hell is this? Yo? Like, I'm literally like shocked, bro. I'm like, no way. And my mom was sitting there like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love, it. Stay focused. I love it. No, I was like, I love it. So then what threw my mom off a little bit is like they started talking to the basketball team and this would really turn Plummer away from what I think. Plummer was already turned off in the beginning because of just where it was. Where it was. But we was in the locker room and coach was talking to all of you know the freshmen that was coming, it was me, Plummer, Easley. Well actually Kendrick didn't come to the orientation. So it was just me and Plummer. Like, um coach said, when y'all go to the gas station or wherever, don't ever go nowhere by yourself. And we was like, like my mommy was like, for, for what? Like, who, who, who the hell going on out here? So we all like, like looking like, he was like, yeah, you know, you know, we just, we're team, teammates go, go everywhere with each other. But the way he said it, it was like, it wasn't like a team thing. Like, it was like, make sure you got somebody with you uh -huh. type shit. We like, what the hell going on, man? So like, Bad vibe, like, off rip for me. I was like, oh, no, nah, like, it's racist out here, Mark. Like, my first thing was, mom, it's racist out here. Plummer said, yo, I'm not coming. Plummer got on the phone with D-Nice. <laughs> He's like, yo, coach, you got to get me out of here, yo. Coach was like, what you mean? And I'm in the phone. I'm going to put it on the phone. Like, D-Nice, you get me out of here, too? My mom was like, nah, y'all going. Like, y'all going. So the whole ride back, my mom was, like, trying to convince us, like, nah, y'all going. And I was like... Nah, I'm not like going. Plum was like, Plum was, he shut up at the while because he like, I ain't trying to no disrespect. I'm like, what is this shit? Like, there's no way. Literally, the next day, my coach called me and was like, Sean had signed. I was like, all right, we're going to be nice. So I called Plum, like, yo, bro, we got Sean now too, bro. He's like, bro, I'm, 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 I'm not going to go state. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm going to go state. I said, man, come on, bro. He's like, yeah, bro, I can't do it. I was like, damn, man, like, it was, it was, it was, I knew I was down and going down the path. Like, when I signed you, I was like, damn, because, and that's when you had just made that tape, too. That's what I'm saying. That your tape was the reason why I went, because, like, my Olive seen that tape. My coach used to tell me all the time that that was how he seen me from, he said he seen me in AU, but then he's like, after he, he made it to, like, two games, seen that tape, he said he should send a tape to his coaches. You know what I'm saying? Send a tape to everybody, like, yo, we got this cat here. He said he even sent a tape to a couple people that's, that was already at the school, like some of the players that was already there, mm -hmm. like, yo, check this cat out, yo, like, this is who we about to bring in, you know what I'm saying, this is who we bringing in, like, that's, who they, that's how they knew about me before I got there, but that's why I, like, I feel like my decision to go to Mount Olive was, like, the best decision for me, uh -huh. but maybe the dumbest decision I could have made, <laughs> because I could have, like I said, hey, bro, good, like, Easily been in George Washington. I could have easily been, you know, went to North State, red shirt, probably. Kids, do your research. Like, because I never did none of my research, you know what I'm saying? Like, on where the school was at, like, what it looked like until we got there. And I had already signed. Like, that, at that time, I signed and everything. Mm -hmm. Then I got there, like, oh, hell. Like, Mount Olive Pickles. Like, it's the pickle capital. Like, if you know the pickle mm -hmm. with the green label, Mount Olive, the damn factory was across the street from, from the gym, bro. Like, that's where we was at, bro. Like, the, the capacity, the, the um, population was like 14,000 people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, in the whole, the whole area, bro. Like, it was nothing. We used to have to drive 35, 40 minutes to go to Walmart. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Like, we only had a Piggly Wiggly, a food line, and one gas station in the whole thing. The school was the whole town. And then, like, you know, you drive down the road and you got those, um, what do you call it, those mobile homes. Or, like, we used to go to parties and stuff and there'll be a house right here. Then it ain't another house for another 15 miles down the road. Like, that was, that's what Marala was. And it was, like, it was a community of black people. And then it's, like, we used to call it across the track because it was literally a railroad track that, that separated the hood mm -hmm. from the rest of Marala, bro. Like, it's literally, like, that joint, I've never seen nothing like it, like, they kept, let's keep them over there. Uh -huh. Like, it was weird, bro. My life was different, bro. How, how was your experience playing there? Sorry. I mean, playing there was dope. Like, I mean, playing with my team was dope because we had a good team, bro. Like, we had a real good team. But 
like I said, playing at Mount Olive was probably like the the weirdest and toughest thing I ever did mentally wise, bro. Cause it's like, like in all my boys at Boston, the Kendrick, all of them, you know what I'm saying? Cause it was different, bro. Like when we got there, it was different, bro. Like it was racist. Like at first I didn't want to realize the racist. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, damn, why they don't fuck with us? Like, cause I didn't know racism, bro. Like we were in Tallwood, like we had all kind of people, people there. there, you know what I'm saying? Last time, all kind of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't really seen racism, you know what I'm saying? So when I get there, bro, it's full blown. Like, we used to, after, like, before our games, we used to have um, the, the alumni walk. We used to shake everybody's hands and give them a high five when we were walking out. Bro, they used to be like, <laughs> looking at us like, dang. Or just clapping. They won't shake our hands. We like, yo, like, that's crazy. Like, Did y'all have any, uh, any uh, white people on your team? No, one. One. We had one all the way to my sophomore, no, to my junior year, we had two. But that was all, the whole basketball team was black, the whole girls basketball team was black. That was the, all the black people that was in the entire school, bro. Like, mm -hmm. And it was so, it was so weird, man. Like, it was, like, the games would never really be packed for real. Like, even when y'all was winning? Even when we was, I mean, when we started winning, they started, it, it would be packed with, like, the, the locals, you know what I'm saying? But the black people never used to really come to the games, though. And I never really used to understand why until I started hanging out with the people from across the track. Mm -hmm. You know, because I was still smoking. So I used to go over there and get my, you know what I mean? I used to go to them like, yo, man, y'all come to the game? They're like, man, we ain't going to that game, bro. We don't go to the, I don't go to the campus, bro. Like, why not? Like, bro, you know where you at? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, do you know where you at? Like, bro, we stayed right up. Like, they had their own store, their own little grocery store, like everything. They didn't need to come over there. Like, and it was literally, it wasn't like it was 15 minutes down the street, bro. It was literally across the railroad track. That was it. And they would not come to the games for nothing, bro. Like, it was weird, bro. Like, it's, it's it was like so different. You know what I'm saying? So, at first, my freshman year was like crazy. Like, I, I used to call my mom every day, crying like, yo, I wanna come home. Like, I'm trying to bug up out of here. I'm trying to come home. Because, bro, we used to literally have people, they used to take, it's just shit and piss in the cup and lean that joint on your door and boom, 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 bang on your door and you open the door and it don't just spill out on your feet. Man, when I tell you, we used to want to tear heads off of you other folks in there. I remember one time we going to the bathroom, they got nigga rope and shit all on their own mirrors. Like, they used to shit in the showers on purpose. Cause it was like, literally bro, like- Like community shower. Yeah, like the second, the second, the second floor, second and third floor was just, it was the well, second floor, third, I'm sorry, third floor was the basketball team. That's where all the basketball players stayed at. He probably had a couple soccer players, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was black or mixed. That was still on the third floor. Second to first floor, baseball team. You know, soccer team. The baseball team, we used to have hella beef with them. Like, they was so racist, bro. Like, like it was, it literally got to the point where like we used to fight all the time, like mm -hmm. cause they used to always used to say some slick shit, and then we used to you know how to jump you, you walk in the doorway because my dunk on you they just slap uh -huh. the slap the lips and we used to do that all the time so they used to get mad as hell like that was, you know, so <laughs> but that was just like when we used to get there we just it's just fun shit that we used to do but they started taking that shit serious bro like we didn't have one of them pull out a knife on us one time like they used to take it to a different level when then we started understanding. Why are they taking it that far? Because mm -hmm. they really didn't fuck with us. Like, yeah, we, we black, we come in and take over this school. And then we was actually good. The baseball team won like three national championships. So they got, they, they drafted like, like three, they, three or four of their players got drafted to the league. So they was good too. You know what I'm saying? But they were just deep. And so like playing basketball there, like my freshman year, it like took the fun away from this year because it was so much other shit that we had to worry about, bro. Like, yeah. Yeah, bro, like, it was literally bigger than basketball there, bro. Like, it was a different level with it. Like, I literally used to call my mom every day. Like, yo, mom, I'm trying to come home. I'm going to either, somebody going to kill me out this zone, <laughs> or I'm going to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? So I got to get up out of here. My mom was like, no, nah, you know, she very spiritual. Just say this is where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? I was like, all right. Man, it was the worst, bro. Like, playing in, like, playing with Kendrick, you know what I'm saying? Like, Kenny used to be in his own vibe. So I guarantee you he's seen it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He used to be around him too, but Kenny was one of them dudes, bro, he's in the room. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, he ain't doing too much. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but like with me and Sean, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to get out, get you know out. what I'm saying? Dude, yeah. Get out of the house, bro. Like, do something, because we had to create our own parties. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
My fir- our first time we got our first probably the first two weeks we was in my aula, bro. All the seniors and stuff, we like we go to the room, you know, like yo, we about to go to the uh, baseball party, like da da da, don't do that. Mm. Hey, you mean, bro? Everybody's supposed to be there, bro. Like we going, bro. They told us in class, you know, everybody said they gonna be there. They like, and at that party for us, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't talking about man. Like, bro, I tell you, bro, don't go that. I was like, bro, we don't care nothing about that. You know, we from North, like we mm-hmm. from North Virginia Beach, like Sean from North, I'm from Virginia Beach. We had another uh, Kendrick um, from North. We had two other guys that was from DC. So I mean, we fuck about none of that shit, man. We about to go see what's happening. Man, we get to the dead room, um, to the uh, to the house. And as soon as we pull up to the house, bro, it's like you see the lights turn on. It's like the police, like we pull up, like the police. Uh-huh. Dude, could they come outside the whole party? Then they come outside. One dude got the shotgun. Another dude got a bat. And mm-hmm. they like, they were like, what y'all doing here? We're like, yo, coming to the party, man. He's like, nah. Mm-mm. This ain't y'all party. This is just our party. Did y'all who, who invited y'all? Like, ain't nobody invited us. This is word around school. Like, so we just come to the party. Like, bro, like literally, like, can y'all laugh? They would not, did not go back in the house or <laughs> nothing until so we left, bro. Like, we get back and I go back to my boy's street house. I'm like, yo, bro, like you wanna play? Like, why I told you, yo, y'all thought we was playing? <laughs> like, bro, we don't need like bro, we we been down that battle, bro. Like, we've been having this battle, like y'all, that they, they seniors. Uh-huh. He like, bro, we've been having this battle since we've been here, bro. Like, we just know not even rock with it no more. Like, don't even try. But us being who we were, bro, like, nah, bro, we're not going for that, bro. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> we got going for none of that. So we was literally like, we used to be in the cafeteria and they used to move away from us type shit. Like, so we used to literally be like, nah, you're like, let's go, let's go back and sit where they at. Like, just childish. Like, let's make them uncomfortable. Yeah, uh-huh. me and we, Sean, like, all of us. And then when my boy Wild thing got there. Oh, yeah. He was even like more like that my boy D State who was like, nah, bro, like, y'all gonna, y'all gonna, we gonna talk to us, man. Like, we ain't no different from nobody. So, like, in class and stuff, I used to start talking to the white people and more in class, like, yo, how you doing? Like, uh-huh. just speaking, making them uncomfortable, or they gonna try to make them, you know, talk to us. Because we, we play basketball for y'all school, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, we gonna be here, man. Like, <laughs> come on, like, we ain't, we ain't nobody crazy. So, then eventually, it started to get better, bro. But like it started to get to it was got to a point sometimes, bro. Like, like on some, a couple people almost got shot. You know what I'm saying behind yeah. shit like that. You know what I'm saying because it was that's crazy. Like people had to go to back to VA to to get their shit and bring it back to mm-hmm. Mount Olive. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the type of level. And it's like, and my coach Joey, he understood what kind of players he had though. Like, but he he should have won, John. Nah, he, but that that time, like I said, at that time it was Coach Clingy. He was our head coach. And I still, to this day, much respect to Coach Clingy, but I still think to this day he was racist. Oh. But he just, you know, it, it kind of like, because when we was there, bro, like it was it's no head. It was job. Yeah, like we had no headbands. We could wear no headbands. We couldn't have different hair. If one person wear a headband, we all had to wear a headband. We used to have to wear suit and ties at the games. Like we had to, like everything was uniform. We had to walk together. Like we could never go nowhere without each other. Like everything was like so uniformity and like the stuff that he used to have us do. Like he used to have us do these events where the people didn't even like talk to us. It's like, how the hell we here, bro? Like, so it was kind of like he was massive. Like, cause he got a whole team full of black folks, but we gotta, but we gotta act a certain way to, to to them, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, when they could just act whatever. Right, and he and he be fine with that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So when he retired, everybody was like, everybody that played was like, hell yeah, yo. like <laughs> thank you, yo. Boom, I started growing my dreads. Everything started changing, bro. Like the whole vibe of the Mount Olive started to change. Like literally, like from the people to the to the aura of the games. Like the games started getting more hype because we started. Now I went from. You know, because you know, I used to talk shit. I went from playing, not talking shit. So I was like, everything was so serious. And then my sophomore year, oh, I'm out talking shit now. You know, I'm getting hype. I'm getting the crowd hype. You know what I'm saying? And the whole or the game started to change. And I think that's what kind of changed, you know what I'm saying? The people that start mm-hmm. liking us a little bit more because they kind of seen a little bit more personality of who we were instead of just everybody, you know what I'm saying, walking like goddamn robots <laughs> all day at that time because. It's like that's how we had to be. Yeah. Like my life was, was it was rough, bro. Like <laughs> what was your uh, plans after 
after my all did you did you try to yeah. go overseas? Did you, man, did you play him? when I tell you big out big shout out to Mike Anderson, man, and Terrence Woodbury, man. Like those are like my big bros at that time. Cause when I had left college, like um I never forget my coach was like, You coming back to finish? And I was like, nah. I'm about to go see what I could do with this overseas stuff first, and then, you know, I'll come back. I can always finish. Like, I feel like now is, like, my time, you know what I'm saying? I got to try it. And Mike and Woodbury, literally, they was getting invited to all these camps. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, wherever y'all go, bro, like, see if I can pay to go to the camp. So every time they would go somewhere, like, yo, Mike, we're going to hit this. It's like $200 for you to go to camp. Boom, pay the $200. we are on the road. Like, we literally went, like, two weeks driving to camp to camp to camp to camp to camp all up and down the east coast bro driving in my and my and my goddamn uh avalon mm -hmm. to avalon and driving <laughs> everywhere bro like hitting every camp in the world and then at first like the the major camp that i went to was like that the um it's like the d league camp and that's what i knew that i was like this shit real, man. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> because that's what they Everybody play. just as hungry as you. Everybody just as hungry. Everybody is just as tall. Mm -hmm. Everybody just as athletic. You know what I'm saying? And then, when well, I knew it was real, when they when they was splitting everybody up, and they put me with the point guards. Mm -hmm. And my junior senior year, I was playing four to five. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was playing three, four to five. But the only reason I was doing that in college was because I was always mismatched. Mm -hmm. You know, since whoever was playing, if I was playing a four, they got somebody six nine playing the four. He ain't check. He can't check me out there. So they'll put me at the four, but I can still rebound and box out with him. Mm -hmm. But he can't come check. So I used to take the ball up court and got the six nine dude check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he he ain't got nothing for me. So that's why I used to play the four and the five. So when I get to um to these camps, bro, they got me playing with the point guard. I'm doing like point guard drills. I'm like, oh shit. So I'm out there with no Asian. Like everybody out here basically got an Asian. Like. Mm -hmm. So everybody out there is they known, you know what I'm saying? There's people from Wake Forest, it's just like known players, and then you know they my olive was like, what the hell my olive at? Dude was like, what where the hell my olive? I was like, North Carolina. He was like, I ain't never heard of that. Like, this one of the coaches, like, uh -huh. like, yo, I never heard of my olive. I'm yeah. like, yeah. So Woodbury and them Asians used to come to me and tell me, like, yo, I like, come to my our hotel room and be like, look, when you go, you need to start doing stuff that stands out, bro. Like, like, you have to. If you not, you're going to get lost. Because it's like 300 people out here. Uh -huh. Like, if you don't, you're going to get lost. Like, ain't nobody going to look at you. He was like, go to the store, get you the brightest headband you can get. I went to the bitch, got me a pink one. Mm -hmm. Had a pink headband. He was like, go up. You go to the jump, get a loudest arm sleeve or something. Mm -hmm. Wear the loudest sneakers. Something. When you go be the loudest one out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to do something to make you stand out. So, Mike... It was like, yo, bro, let us start dunking the hell out of that shit, bro. We in warm-ups. I'm surprised you're not here. But it was like, because when we in warm-ups, like, we doing the, the regular drills, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Just So I'm I'm focusing on the ball <laughs> handling, you know what I'm saying? The ball handling, and coming on screens, and so I'm getting to the just laying it up. Like, just trying to, I'm trying to be too perfect out there, bitch, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Because that's how the mind frame was. But then I was like, you know what? I got to be something extra. So I started coming down after get off the, come off the screen, I was tearing the rim off that bitch. And then like after that, then you get those those agents that are out there and they start coming to like after you your you know, you, cause we play like different games, like after the game or after, you know, your little you had a film session, and you can see those those agents coming up to you like, Hey, what's your name, man? Where you from? And I'm like and then the dude was like, Yo, see, I told you, like, once you start doing something that's like you gotta separate yourself from everybody out here, cause everybody do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you gotta make people see you, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was good. It was a good camp. I got cut because they did it like, like um, like every day. Yeah, like every day they did a cut. So I made it to the third day. Got cut, but I was going to like every camp, bro. Like every camp with them. So it was dope, like because I wanted to play. Like that was my thing. Was I just wanted to play overseas. So when I got back home, like it was still that was still the grind. Like me, Woodbury, Mike we used to go train with D Nice in the morning. Then with me and Mike used to go back home, and I used to ride my bike. We, me and Mike used to ride our bike with the last time, go work out with Coach Kelly. And then, like, that was the everyday grind. Like, we was at it. Like, my handles was getting better. Uh -huh. My shot was getting better. I wouldn't, I, I fucked them up at the Pro-Am that year. Like, I was, I, could, I felt myself getting a lot better from being in college. Like, I started to get smarter. And all that shit. So I was like, you know what? I ain't going back to school. Like I'm about to just try to do this. Like I had a couple people that was hitting me up. 
And I was like, I might just, I might just hoop, I'm like fuck it. So when you told me a story, you say you signed, and then the day you signed, you wind up. Man, <laughs> dog, like I never forget that. So who you signed with? It was a team of guitar, uh, and they, um, they had basically the agent that I had linked up with at that camp. He sent me his contract, signed the contract for him, like that morning. Mm -hmm. Then that afternoon, he called me right back. He was like, hey, I got you a contract to play guitar, like the Middle East or some shit like that. So I was like, okay, bet. I was like, let's do I don't care how much it is, bro. Like, let's do this shit. Like, so he's like, all right, I'm going to fax you over the contract. So I'm like, all right, cool. Fax me, like, tell my mom, it's, it's me, Juice, Dave, Sean, all my boys at the crib. And so they sit fax me about the joint, sign the joint, send it back. Go outside, cry a little bit, like, damn yeah, right. Tell my mom, my mom was like, congratulations, I'm about to go out of town for a couple of days. She was like, here, take my black card. You know, she had an unlimited American Spec black card. She was like, take my black card, y'all go have fun. Mm -hmm. Bet. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> Say no more, man. Mm -hmm. So, fucking, um, at that time, I was promoting parties at uh, Blakely's. So then I hit my boy, the owner of Blakely, so I hit him up and was like, yo, we about to come up there. Like, I just signed her out. He was like, all right, back, got you. So he was like, you got the whole upstairs, bro. Like, you can, the whole upstairs is yours. And we, like, literally at the whole upstairs ourselves. Like, we was just parted. And like, we'll walk around and thing. So then after we leaving in the parking lot, um, we was wasted. Like, I was wasted. Like, I, I know I had the girls carrying me, like, not carrying me, like, I would have, like, I would have my arms on them and we walking out. And then this car just comes up and slams on brakes. So I turn, I hit the hood of the car. Yo, what the fuck? What's up, bro? Soon as they, they get out instantly, we get the scuff. So I don't know what it was about. I don't know, like, maybe I said something to him previously in there. I don't know. Like, so we just, they get out of the car, we just get the scuff. Man. My chain gone out there. They made, they start mason, my chain gone. One of my shoes and came off my feet. So I grab my shoe. I'm like, yo, this nigga got my chain. I'm like, yo, tell the Dave. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck was this? Who the fuck was this? Who is this? Who is this? They're like, bro, we don't know. Yo, tell you, Mike, get in the car. So I get in the car, and we driving past, and right next to Blake, there's a 7 Eleven right there. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, yo, go to that 7 Eleven, because 7 Eleven is packed. Yeah. So I'm like, go to 7 Eleven. Somebody out here knows something. So I'm drunk. So I get out the car. I'm like, I'm walking up there. Everybody. Because I know a lot of people out there. So I'm on everybody. Like, yo, who the fuck y'all see who the fuck is with it? Like, nah, bro, like, nah. I'm walking to everybody, yo, who the fuck was this, bro? Like, y'all see, who was driving this, this silver bands, yo? Who know who driving silver bands? Because I'm like, it got my chain. So then um, my boy was like, yo, like, come on, bro, we out. We out. So I'm like, all right. So I go inside of 7-Eleven, get me something to drink, come out that joint, and we like walking towards my car. And I want to say it was Dave. He was about closest by my car. And he was like, yo, come on, bro. So as I walk into the car, I see that damn Benz. I said, oh, then they ass go right there. So I started walking up further. And then I, I don't know what it was, bro, but something just didn't feel right about the situation. And then I just seen the car just stop. And I was like, then all of a sudden I just heard one shot, pow. And I turned around and started flying. Then I heard like three more, pow, pow, pow. And then literally when I got hit, bro, like it didn't, it felt like my whole leg <laughs> was gone, bro. Like, like literally it felt like my whole damn leg was gone. Cause I just hit the ground and still grabbed my leg. And um, I remember Jamina and her friends, they grabbed me and put me in their car. Mm -hmm. Because Dave and them was right next to where they were shooting at, so they couldn't get to me. Mm -hmm. So then when they finally got to me, Jamina was like, yo, just follow us. So I'm in the back, hollering my ass off, get to the hospital. And um, they put me to bed, and I was in the hospital. They was like, the cop kept coming in there asking me these same bullshit ass questions like, who are you? What you do for a living? I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? I play basketball, man. Like, I'm, I'm giving them all my information. Why I cry? I got a whole bullet in my leg. You know what I'm saying right now? But the crazy thing is, it wasn't even bleeding. So, as he's sitting there asking me these questions, he's like, yo, you know how many people outside right now for you? And I'm like, yo, I don't care. Yo, like, y'all do something on my leg. You know, like, but then they come in there, they cut my jeans off me. And when they cut my jeans off me, the blood started squirting everywhere, bro. Like, everywhere. So then the lady came in and they, you know, gave me some medicine and stuff, put me to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I was bodied, like I was drunk, bro. Like, and I woke up the next morning, I I remembered 
but I didn't. But it's like as soon as I opened my eyes, yo, and I see my leg hanging up on the thing, I was like, oh, that shit did happen last night, yo. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm sitting there. Yeah. So I literally, bro, as soon as I opened my eyes, instantly started crying, bro. Like, fuck, like, what the fuck happened? So then the doctor come in there, she was like, yeah, you was too drunk last night to get surgery, so we had to give you surgery this morning. Like, and this happened at like two. Mm -hmm. So I had to get surgery at like seven in the morning, type joint, eight in the morning. And um, it was like, yeah, so one of the bullets must have ricocheted and hit you because that one, when it ricocheted, that one bounced around and the other one went straight through. So it was like, you know, the one that bounced around and checked my kneecap and told my, um, my uh, AC, not my ACL, four or five months, bro. Like, That's crazy. just in there, like, for the first month and a half, bro, like, I was literally sick, bro. Like, I would beat myself up. What did like, the uh, agent say? I mean, when I called him, bro, I told him about this shit. He, I told him, like, because I was supposed to be gone, like, yeah. two months. Mm -hmm. I told him, and he was like, all right, let me contact them to see, you know, what, what they want to do. Bro, I ain't got no email enough for any sense, bro. <laughs> yeah, you know, they move on quick. Yeah, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I started reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. Like, literally, bro, like, they didn't even give me no type of nothing. Like, so I'm sitting there, bro, I'm, like, I, I'm hurt, bro. Like, damn, bro, I think I fought about only chance, bro. Like, it was tough getting back, man. That shit was, like, mentally, it was, like, it was mentally draining, bro. Like, and then I went to um, Fayetteville. And played in um mm -hmm. semi pro league, you know. Somebody put me on with it. my coach. Actually, from, from my my put me on with the semi pro league. I went out there, man, and played in like two games, bro. Like after the first game, I went home. After the first game, I went home to my aunt house, stayed at my aunt house in Fayetteville, and my knee swore like a fucking balloon, bro. Like, and I put the ice on it. You know that shit went down. Woke up the next morning to go hoop. Like, for the next game, we had back-to-backs, bro, and I could barely fucking move, bro. And I was trying not to, like, I, I didn't want to tell them. So I wrapped that joint up with my knee brace on. I was like, fuck, I'm just going to go But, bro, like, I could barely bend my joint. Like, I could barely maneuver. And it was like, because that was the first time I really, like, hoop, hoop in the full game. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been doing drills. I've been running miles. I've been doing all of that stuff. But, like, it's different when you got to change the directions and, you know, and actually, you know, your twitch fibers gotta move differently, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's just different than just training. Mm -hmm. So after that, I was like, ain't no way I could do this no more, bro. Like, then I started just doing the regular rehab gym, and that shit just started pissing me off. Like, so this is <laughs> this is where this guy, I just gotta sit here with these rubber bands and go ahead and talk to these people so they can just do this. Like, it was started pissing me off so long, because now it's like a year now. You know what I'm saying? Like, now I'm like a year in this shit. Like, it's like, damn, this shit, both of you ACL you know, don't take them this long. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I would say I was still playing, but it wasn't to what I want, where I wanted it to be. Like, I, I didn't even start dunking again, bro, until like, I said like two and a half years, three years after that. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it was just, That's crazy. yeah, like it was, it was, so it wasn't even, it wasn't, it wasn't, I wasn't me no more. So I was like, man, I can't do this shit no more. Like, I got, I still beat myself up to this day for, cause I could have went a lot harder with the, with the training to try to get back, mm -hmm. but I was so mentally fucked. I think I mentally was mentally beating myself up about getting shot. Yeah. Then you know what I'm saying. Then focused on just getting back because at the end of the day, I didn't have to go out to the club. Bro. I could have just said, you know what, fuck, let me sign this on, fellas, because I, oh, we partied in the house too. Yeah, we could have partied in the crib. <laughs> <laughs> good, but the whole thing, like, from the time I left college, like, I should have did it different. I should have stayed at college and trained. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Train with, train with my coach, like, because once I left, I knew I wasn't coming back. Like, there's no way, because I was so ready to get the fuck out of our olive. That's what you're doing with all that shit. Right. Uh -huh. So if I would have stayed there, trained there. You know what I'm saying? Because I would have had nothing, nothing else to do but wake up and go to the gym. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so it would have kind of forced me, but, you know, I got back home. You know, I kind of had the freedom to do whatever the fuck I wanted to do. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, it was one of the things that is what it is, man. But that, all that dunking on is, like, after that, that jump stopped. Because I'll never forget who was at the, when I came back from college. Playing the program that year, and I dunked on Donnie something <laughs> crazy. 
some crazy, bro. I was, I was like, it was me and the dude Tay that went to um, Booker T. Mm -hmm. Me and him was getting busy in the pro in that year and Plumber. We was getting busy, bro, and I felt like I was at the top of my game. Like my game was so solid at that point, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it was like before I was just all I was doing was dunking. But I went that pro where I was lights out. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, <laughs> I was, I was getting to the cup and finishing with both hands. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? It was like it was my game was getting a lot elevating to the to the highest level. And because D nice and Coach Kelly, bro, like. D nice definitely like he knew me and knew my game, but he like Dez like when when I was training with D nice all the time, D nice used to be we used to be training Dez, and that's when when I was back then, Dez was probably what like ninth grade. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, oh, this little dude, this little nigga be nasty. Like that's how long me and Dez been training together. Cause back then, like that's like how Dez played now. Like that's how D nice taught him how to play, bro. Like. D nice was that Dez is real smart on the court. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love how Dez come around screens under control. Like he uses body real well. He get his shoulder square with people real well. I seen him in the pro now that one year Mike went off. Mm -hmm. Anderson. And I was like, yo, who the f is this? Mm -hmm. And he was just it was just crazy. Yeah, man. so it was like that's the kind of game that I had to try to form to after the whole thing, after me get shot. It was like that ain't me, I, ain't, I don't got that. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that ain't my game right there. I need to play above the rim. Like regardless, like defense wise, everything, I need to play above the rim. And I couldn't really get up. Like I'm just, and then I gained weight. I know during our season in 2006, uh, I guess some dudes tried to come in. Like, <laughs> and yeah, fight. yeah. What, what, what was the backstory? Because I don't know the backstory. About man, what happened with that, that? it was a girl that I was messing with, man. Um, and, uh, the girl was like, she was about to move or something like that. So she was like, but me and Juice was over her crib, like the day before all this happened. She was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to do something. Oh, he was mad. Yada, 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 yada. I was like, oh, all right. So that's what I was saying when I was like the Booker T. Mm -hmm. We had but we played Booker T at church and something was going on in the stands. She came to the game with a shirt she got made that said Holloman's wife she went back. <laughs> and I was dating, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn. So um but when that joint happened right before we played Herndon, you know what I'm saying, um it was weird because I was in the gym and um she had a boyfriend that dude went to Salem. I ain't know nothing about dude, you know what I'm saying? So I mean I knew that she had an ex I didn't give a fuck back then, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in the gym and um I never. I was just had my ice bags on my knees. Then I walked through the door, and I'm sitting there talking to Coach T. You know, I hear the door open, boom. He was like, "Yo, what up, what, what up, my guy?" I was like, "I'm right here. Like, what up?" Like, I seen the blue flags everywhere. Da, da, da. And you know, that's what I was saying. Like, when I was in the Calvary, like I was around a whole bunch of bloods. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in Calvary. You know what I'm saying? And I became affiliated with a lot of that. And so I was like, I'm thinking it was behind that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh shit, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> so then they get to ask me, I'm like, yo, I'm right here. So then Coach T grabbed me, like, nah, come on, Mike, come on, come on. Started pulling me to the back. And then, you know, they started getting closer and closer. And then as soon as they got close, you know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't really go nowhere no more because I had hit the ball rack. Mm -hmm. So I just hit the dude, we just got a rumbling. But, um, and I found out like who it was later, you know what I'm saying? Like it was the girl's boyfriend and some other dudes. But um the girl had called me like right before that shit happened, like my mom put everything pieces together. The girl called my mom and asked my mom, was I at practice? And my mom was like, because my mom knew it, my mom was like, Yeah, yeah, practice, I got a game tomorrow. She was like, oh, okay. She was like, Well, what's up? She was like, oh, no, I was calling because I'm about to go up there and see him. Like and then after the joke was over. I was I was laughing about this shit because it was funny, but it was like that's what made Tall a year so like like a movie. like a lot of people don't know a lot of the backstory stuff that happened. right bro, like, like just a whole bunch of stuff happened that year a whole bunch bro like and then for that to happen right before the earning game mm -hmm. was like 
What the hell is going on here? You know, like, Imagine if the news was there. Right. And know, they, we had to go to court and everything for that shit. For real. Like, yeah, the school press charges on them and everything. Like, because they got trespassing charges and it was older. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it was a whole thing. Like, we had to go to two different courts. Yeah, you know. we had to go to court twice for that joke. It was a whole bunch of shit, bro. Like, it was a whole bunch of But it was funny, though, because they, they tried it and they got worked out. <laughs> <laughs> they tried it and they got worked out, but yeah, that's why I was like, yo, talking was, was like a movie, man. Like, everything that year was like, yo, that ain't really just happened. Bro. Like, that didn't really happen. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, like, all that, like, the fighting in the, in the we fought, um, who was that that was fighting back, back there, um, halftime? Salem. 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 Juice and Zeus. Yeah, Juice. Juice and Zeus going at it, like. Like all of it, yo. Like everything. <laughs> like we used to just. It was. Uh, it was. It was definitely a year mm -hmm. for the books, man. It was one of those things. It was definitely a year for the books. Mm. Well, I appreciate you coming, bro. I appreciate you having me, man. Yeah. Finally, you got me up here, man. I've been asking him for about six months, man. When you gonna get me up here, man? I got a story to tell. You probably got the longest. You mm -hmm. got that one of them Jay Z uh, Breakfast Club interviews. The longest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just. Appreciate it. Though. Yeah, it's gonna be good. When he chop it up. <laughs> Alright. Peace. Deuces.